Good Sunday morning. I'm still reporting on the coup. On Friday, Greg Kelly of Newsmax took on the issue of President Trump's recent smackdown of Ron DeSantis. It's an important issue because America needs Trump and DeSantis to be unified in the coming years in their opposition to the Red Dragon. And by that, I mean Red China. How many times does almost everybody have to be proved wrong about Donald Trump? It's true. Ultimately, he's always right. I am very, very confident in him and uh, whatever he wants to do next. And I have been quite clear. I hope that includes running for and winning the presidency. All right. So as usual, the mainstream media certainly can't figure it out, but also the conservative media surprisingly and very disappointingly. And actually, when it comes to Fox, not that surprisingly. But first, the mainstream. Watch them getting it all wrong and overreacting. The, you know, brewing feud between Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. Make no mistake, DeSantis had a huge night this week. Trump had objectively a terrible one. I am very much looking forward to this fight because this is a monster that needed to be killed a long time ago. I'm telling you, if this if this cult is falling apart as we speak because he picked the wrong fight with the wrong guy at yeah. the wrong time. Everybody knows what Trump is. His behaviors are always uh, brutish and immature. And I think that Ron is a statesman about it. And the more he stays that way, the better he's going to look. <laughs> uh, this is basically turning on the television anytime over the past seven years. You heard something along these lines. Um, there's a little bit of a different twist. Yes, this feud with Ron DeSantis and Fox News also just calling it quits and running for the exits. And right now, Donald Trump keeps taking shots at Ron DeSantis. That is not going to play well. When they see Trump going after DeSantis, they're like, what is he doing? Why are, why are they, why, why is he going after him? And it's like watching your parents fight. You All know? right, calm down, everybody. They don't know what they're talking about. And going after Ron DeSantis, uh, you call this an attack. Look, on this Veterans Day, I was in the Marine Corps, all right? And before they let me fly jets, they yelled at me at boot camp and all that stuff. This is child's play, what's happening between DeSantis and Trump right now. And it's also politics. It's no big deal. And it's far less severe than anything Bill and Hillary Clinton said about Barack Obama. And yes, let me prove it to you, okay? Bill Clinton made a horrible and racist statement about Barack Obama back in 2007, 2008, when he was fighting Hillary for the nomination. You can look it up. He said it. He was so frustrated, he said it to Teddy Kennedy. A few years ago, this guy would have been getting us coffee. It's Bill Clinton, his assessment of Barack Obama. A little bit uppity in my book, where I come from. I mean, that was one of the harshest, most ridiculous things ever said about Barack Obama, and I'm no fan of Barack Obama. And then Hillary Clinton, what did she say? Forget Barack Obama, forget her rivals. What about the people? You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Racist, sexist, all those things, not against a rival, but against America. Against America. Wow. And now the media, conservative media too, having a meltdown about Donald Trump. They still haven't figured him out. After all of these years, Instead of being outraged by him all the time, why don't you study him? Why don't you learn something? And here are three basic things to know about Donald Trump. He's from New York City. He's a billionaire and he's not a politician. Those three factors about Donald Trump explain so much. Look, New Yorkers, they're different from the rest of the country. Billionaires, they can be wild. That's how they became billionaires. But most of all, he's not a politician. You know how old he was when he came down the escalator? 69 years old. I mean, look, I think he's going to live to be 100. Uh, but obviously, he did not spend his career in politics, and he doesn't talk like those guys. That's one of the reasons why we like him. Now, let's go to this uh, DeSantis situation, all right? Um, 
DeSantis really studied Trump, and he copied him a lot. Uh, more on that later. But this statement that Donald Trump put out that's getting everybody all upset, it's fine. It's nothing really that crosses the line. Let's go through it. Governor Ron DeSanctimonious, an average Republican governor with great public relations. Well, let's start with the DeSanctimonious part. This is actually a very good and very accurate nickname for Governor De DeSantis. I disagree, Greg. Trump does occasionally make a mistake. <clears throat> Operation Warp Speed. Trump fell victim to the greatest medical hoax of all time. Everyone knows it. And the victims of this, the greatest medical deception in world history, are starting to drop like flies of heart attacks with foot-long spike protein strands clogging up their blood vessels. This is no accident. This is a direct attack on America. These people quite literally want to kill us off the land of the free. If Trump apologizes, says, I was wrong to listen to Dr. Grouchy, then his record remains golden. But that's hard for a guy like Trump to do. Now he's compounding it by publicly humiliating DeSantis to try to put this young warrior back into his place after conducting one of the greatest political conversions of a state's governance in the history of this nation. I don't know what went on behind the curtain, but DeSantis must have said something to someone about Trump, who then called Trump right away to report, and it infuriated Trump. And for good reason, as Greg Kelly now rightly points out. Who puts out a commercial like this? Did you see it? I mean, talk about cringe, talk about over the top. They did it, not me. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a protector. So God made a fighter. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, kiss his family goodbye, travel thousands of miles for no other reason than to serve the people to save their jobs, their livelihoods, their liberty, their happiness. Yeah. So God made a fighter. All right, you see, it's whoa, whoa. He's the governor of a state. Relax, all right? And there's a lot of politicking and glad handing. Easy there, please. And what else did Donald I mean, the sanctimonious, that totally works. Ron came to me in, a, in desperate shape in 2017. He was politically dead. Losing a landslide to a very good agriculture commissioner, Adam Putman. Uh, this is true. He was. Let's take a look at the polls back then. In 2017, Adam Putman was uh, the man to beat. It was a crowded field. Uh, there is 20. And Ron DeSantis behind him, double digits. That's December 17th, 2017. Trump puts out a tweet. And it's a full-fledged endorsement. He's a brilliant young leader. Yale and Harvard, all that stuff, would make a great governor of Florida. He loves our country and is a troop fighter. And what happened to the polls? <laughs> he shot up to first place in almost a matter of hours. I mean, all right, so this is not an exaggeration. This is a statement of fact in this state. It really is. Also, oh, who remembers Andrew Gillum? He brought him up in the uh, statement here, Andrew Gillum. Uh, then Ron got by the star of the Democrat Party, Andrew Gillum, who was later revealed to be a crackhead. Now, this makes so many people appalled, but again, it's true. Um, and DeSantis had a tough time putting away Gillum in the debate. He was all kind of just nervous and twitchy. DeSantis was. It was not a great performance, but whatever. He beat him, and it's true, Gillum turned out to have all kinds of substance abuse problems. He wound up on that floor in Miami, and uh, we wish him all the best recovery in, in the private sector. Uh, what else? Donald Trump did throw major rallies, having two massive rallies with tens of thousands of people at each one. And this is true. As president of the United States, he went down to Florida and campaigned for then-Congressman Ron DeSantis. This... This is a pretty big deal. Uh, also this, it says that DeSantis was having some campaign trouble. I also fixed his campaign, which had completely fallen apart. Now the fake news is all over this. We have no evidence of this. There's no evidence. Fake news, they never realized that maybe there are some things they're not privy to that a president of the United States just might be privy to. Hmm, that's kind of reasonable. 
just because they can't Google it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Next, uh, he said this, I sent in the FBI and the U.S. attorneys and the ballot theft immediately ended. Yeah, there were some, uh, well, there were some hiccups around the election of Ron DeSantis uh, back in November of 2018. Results from Florida's Senate and governor's races remain unclear a week after the polls closed. The state is once again mired in recounts and lawsuits. At the center of the drama is South Florida's Broward County. Officials there are working around the clock to recount more than 700,000 ballots ahead of Thursday's deadline. All right. Now, does that mean that uh, the U.S. attorneys went inside and investigated what did Donald Trump say exactly in that statement? I sent in the FBI and the U.S. attorneys and the ballot theft immediately ended. Well, that could have meant I put him on standby. I told him, hey, if anything happens, I need you guys to be ready. It's, it's not a big deal. And it's interesting. And it may have happened. So fake news is feasting over that. Look, what I'm trying to do here is show you that this is actually a reasonable statement. It is. Next, please. Uh, oh, and now Ron DeSanctimonious is playing games. The fake news asks him if he's going to run, uh, if President Trump runs. And he says, I'm only focused on the governor's race. I'm not looking into the future. Well, in terms of loyalty and class, that's really not the right answer. Uh, I agree with President Trump. Now, in political circles, this happens all the time. People just turn their back on you, forget what you did for them. That's politics. But remember, Donald Trump is not a politician and he doesn't play by their rules. And if they break the rules, actually their own rules, he's free to point it out. Wrapping this up, Fox News, he has something to say about that. This is just like 2015 and 2016, a media assault, collusion, when Fox News fought me to the end until I won. So Fox News is turning on him now and yes, they turned on him. They were never really with him until, as he said, he got elected. Watch. Loser. Loser is Trump, who seems to think this campaign is about him and doesn't realize it's about angry, disenchanted voters and a broken political system. That's from Brett Baer's show, who does run Fox's 6 p.m. news. But Brett Baer is not what Fox News is all about. He is basically an outlier at Fox, not exactly a never-Trumper, but willing to basically do what he is told to do. Now this guy, this commentator he had on his show, is not even on Fox at all now. This is very deceptive editing on Greg Kelly's part in order to make his point. The Republicans uh, can't win with Trump as the nominee. And this Trump hater, Larry Sabato, of the overrated University of Virginia, who was so wrong about Trump in the 2016 election that Fox has banned him, essentially. A ridiculous lefty professor from an extremely lefty college school. I don't take Donald Trump seriously. Matthew Littman, never heard of him. Never seen him on Fox, and I watch it a lot. He's not a credible candidate for the presidency. He won't win a Republican primary. He won't win Iowa. He won't win New Hampshire. He won't win any state. I think, frankly, he's got to figure out what his exit strategy is going to be to protect his ego on his way out. Ari Fleischer is wrong at least half the time. Fox keeps asking him to be on so they can maintain this illusion that they're fair and balanced. He still is occasionally on and occasionally makes a good point, but he's not trusted generally. And these guys are still paid to talk about politics on television. How about that? So, Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. I got to point this out again, if you haven't noticed. Uh, DeSantis has picked up everything he does as governor from Donald Trump in terms of substance and policy. And, oh, yeah, style. Look at that. Now, you think Ron DeSantis was talking in this manner uh, before Donald Trump uh, came on the scene, he wasn't. And policy, my gosh, everything has been taken from Donald Trump. Hey, I'm fine with that. And I like Ron DeSantis for president someday. But I believe he owes it to President Trump to sit this one out. I've said for years that Trump sent DeSantis down to run for governor of Florida so that DeSantis could succeed and do something good for Florida and thereby establish his own loyal base so he could follow Trump into office in 2028 and 32. Trump set this all up, but DeSantis got very heady during his victory speech last Tuesday night, which is entirely natural. 
I still support both of them, but without Trump's support, Ron DeSantis would still be among the unknowns. I mean, take a look at this. Everyone knows my husband, Ron DeSantis, is endorsed by President Trump, but he's also an amazing dad. Ron loves playing with the kids. Build the wall. He reads stories. Then Mr. Trump said, you're fired. I love that part. He's teaching Madison to talk. Make America great again. People say Ron's all Trump, but he is so much more. Big league. So good. I just thought you should know. Ron DeSantis for governor. Wow, I like Trump, but that is a little much, huh? I mean, anyway, it worked. He became governor, and again, I think he owes him. I have to agree. Who brought you to the dance, Ron? And here's somebody else who might be thinking about president who shouldn't because he owes Donald Trump, and that's Glenn Youngkin. Number one, he hasn't been governor of Virginia long enough, not even a year so far. And President Trump has been warning him gently don't do this, Glenn. It's not your time. He points out that he endorsed him uh, enthusiastically. Let's go ahead and put it up on the screen. I endorsed him, did a very big Trump rally for him, telephonically got MAGA to vote for him, or he couldn't have come close to winning. Uh, I buy that, don't you? If Donald Trump came out against Yunkin, that would have been a problem. Uh, Let's see, what else in this statement? Actually, here it gets interesting. He calls into question his name, Young Kin, but he spelled it this way, and he says, sounds Chinese, doesn't it? All right. Well, that's not racist. Sorry. What he's getting at is Youngkin's work with the Carlyle Group. Carlyle Group is some great big private equity slash hedge fund, uh, what do they call themselves, a global alternative asset management company. And he's, uh, I think, a billionaire. And it's global. So guess what? They definitely did a lot of work with the Chinese. Here's Glenn on the left there in a promotional video, an internal video for the Carlyle Group. Oh, that's not good. Youngkin did a great job chasing the minions of Satan out of positions of power in my old home state, but hidden ties to China will never be a good thing in a U.S. election in future years. Remember, for the next couple of generations, whenever you are in doubt about what is really going on, until and unless you hear that the Chai Kham military has revolted on the minions of Satan and sent the communists packing, the Chai Kham's have admitted that they want to kill us and they need America's farmland and America's energy resources. Anyway, everything he has said about Yunkin, about DeSantis, quite frankly, is factual and measured and responsible, certainly when compared to what the Democrats say about each other. It's it's amazing they try to depict him as some sort of barbarian. Look at what Kamala Harris did to Joe Biden, did it right to his face. So that's where the federal government must step in. That's why we have the Voting Rights Act. Whoa, what Donald Trump said in writing about those two Republicans was positively elegant compared to this hysterical display. So, Greg Kelly, you are mostly right. That's the basic message here. And you notice that DeSantis has taken some good advice to not respond to Trump in kind. Now President Trump has to bury the hatchet and graciously offer an olive branch to DeSantis, even a very subtle one. Keep in mind, as long as Trump has breath in his lungs, he is the only one in this nation powerful enough in spirit to oppose the red dragon effectively. And America's battle against the red dragon is the most important political fight of this century. And Greg, Get off the anti-Fox bandwagon. Without Fox, there literally would not have been a Trump because a platform to support Trump hadn't yet been built until Rupert Murdoch did it. And without Fox and Murdoch taking most of the incoming fire for, oh, a couple of decades before you sauntered into this battle, Newsmax could never have made it this far. 
Greg, just do your job and be happy that the minions of truth, justice, and the American way have put you in a position to keep on fighting. Take some of the heat off Fox and press on. If you succeed in diminishing the immense contribution Fox has made here, you will be succeeding in empowering the minions, and our Father in Heaven will not be pleased when you go home. And receiving His blessing, well done, my good and faithful servant, is the ultimate reward all of us should strive for in a single life. I'm still reporting from just outside the Citadel of World Freedom. Good day.